On this video, we're going to look at two very nice SUVs. The first half is the 2014 Kia Sorento. The second half is going to be the 2013 Honda Cross Tour. If you want to see the Honda Direct, just fast forward to the second half of the video. But if you're looking for a nice SUV in the low $20,000 to high $30,000 range, uh, these both are very nice vehicles and are quite comparable. You might want to watch both videos. So here we have the 2014 Kia Sorento. On the outside, I really can't see that much difference between the other Kia Sorentos. I don't think onlookers will either. But underneath, it's about 70% all new. With new engines, redesigned suspension, improved interior, and electronics have been changed. So we'll look under the hood first. The old 175 horsepower four cylinder is gone, replaced by a new 191 horsepower four cylinder, rated at 20 to 26 miles per gallon. The old 3.5 liter V6 has been replaced by a modern 3.3 liter V6. Gets far more horsepower, a lot smoother, higher RPM. Does not affect fuel economy, however, at 18 to 25 miles per gallon, and hooked to a six speed automatic transmission. This is a very smooth, nice power plant, which we'll talk about later, which is what I got. Now, Kia has been copying all the good features on Japanese vehicles for years, so there's not much to say here. The materials and workmanship of this cabin is excellent. The controls and switches are very simple to use, easy to learn. There is plenty of room in the second row seat. And we get simple knobs for the climate control. Thank you very much, Kia. Simple knobs for the radio controls. Once again, thank you. A lot of other manufacturers are getting away from this, and I don't know why simple knobs work just fine. And the fact they were able to do this, in spite of the fact they had a navigation system, is even more impressive. I also might add the glove box is rather large. It has lots of room. Unfortunately, you'll never know it with this giant telephone book size owner's manual inside, which takes up about 80% of the room. So my advice is to get rid of it. There's no reason for it to be in there. You're never going to be looking at it anyway unless something happens like a flat. <clears throat> Stick it in the door panel just like that. Out of sight, out of mind. Preview of Kia Sorentos are a bit on the stiff side as far as their ride comfort went. This new model has been smoothed out quite a bit. Very comfortable. The body seems to be a little bit stiffer and quieter too. So bottom line is if you're taking a long highway trip or trip out in the country, you're going to be very comfortable in this new Sorento. Also, I might add, this engine's very smooth and has plenty of passing power. The factory lists 0 to 60 in 6.8 seconds. I don't have my stopwatch to grade it, but I'd say it might be pretty close. The suspension does a pretty good job absorbing impacts on these rough forest roads. I did notice, however, that the electric steering has no feel. Pretty dead on arrival, but this is a truck, so it's not that big a deal, really. This is not a sports car, after all. Hmm, got a little bit too close there, didn't you? This is a pretty rocky road here. No car could ever make it up. But as you can see, the Sorento is making it quite well and don't have a scratch on it yet. By the way, all-wheel drive is available on this for $1,700 or more, which works great in uh, sand and mud. But we won't have to worry about that on this trip. Okay, we made it all the way up here, no problem. By the way, the price on this is $25,000 for the four-cylinder. 
This was loaded up with just about everything at 35,000, but the third row seat and rear air conditioning brought it up to 36,000. And of course, if you get the all wheel drive, you had a couple grand on top of that. But keep in mind, the sticker prices aren't always the prices you pay because Kia gives pretty good discounts. So if you bargain with a dealer, especially at the end of the year, you can get it for a lot less. Overall, a much improved vehicle. Okay, now we gave the Kia Sorento a good outdoor workout. And we'll go over to the Honda Cross Tour. And see how it does in the outdoors, among other conditions. Coming up next, so stay tuned. This is the 2013 Honda Cross Tour. Now to call this a car is sort of uh, incorrect. Actually what we have on the top half is a car with four seats and a hatchback. Underneath it's classified as an SUV with beefy tires, raised suspension, and it's available with an optional all-wheel drive system, which Honda calls four-wheel drive. Here's the side view, and as you can see, this is a long vehicle. And from the rear, some uh, journalists have claimed this looks kind of goofy. Actually, I don't have a problem with it. In fact, when you consider most Honda cars look alike, I think this one kind of separates it from the crowd, which I think is a positive thing. I did get a lot of positive comments on the car anyway. The cargo area is large enough, and underneath this panel, there is more storage underneath too. The spare tire is underneath the panel. You have to reach under the bumper, way under there, and release it down just like on a pickup truck. So if you get a flat, you will have a spare tire, but it's not going to be fun changing it. Naturally, the seats fold down for carrying long items in the cargo bay. The base engine is a four-cylinder, last rated at around 192 horsepower, connected to a five-speed automatic, which should do well on a two-wheel drive, light duties. But if you're going to get the four-wheel drive for serious driving, the 3.5 liter V6, putting out 279 horsepower with the six-speed automatic and paddle shifters is the best bet which is what I had. In the cabin, the quality of materials and workmanship is very good. The gauge cluster is simple, easy to read. The button controls on the steering wheel are easy to use. There is sufficient room in the glove box, but only if you take out a thousand pages of owner's manual, which really should be tossed in the trunk people really shouldn't keep these in here just waste space now when it comes to controls I'm old-fashioned I like simple knobs for the air conditioning simple knobs for the radio but since we have an integrated navigation system we're not going to have that luxury so using this system works once you get used to it it took me a couple days because you've got lots and lots of buttons you have to memorize You've got six controls for the climate here, six look-alike controls for the climate there. Uh, the radio is kind of a pain, but once you figure out how the system works, you'll get used to it. I really haven't used the navigation much. It's not a bad system. It's better than what you get on German cars. It's not the best. Like I say, give it a couple days, you'll get used to it. Now the rear seating area has plenty of room for your legs and your arms. Everything's fine unless you happen to have a head. I guess I'm being funny here. Actually, if you're 5'11 or below, you'll be okay. But if you're 6 feet or over, you might have to squish your head down just a little bit back here. One thing I like about the Honda Cross Tour is that these body panels are not going to get your pants leg dirty because the door comes all the way down and protects it. So if you're taking this off-road in the mud and the dirt, that's a pretty good feature. And a feature we're not getting on a lot of other vehicles nowadays, I might add. But I'm glad Honda did this. 
Now you have to keep in mind this is not a car, this is basically a truck and it drives like one. The steering doesn't have the precision you get on the typical Honda car. It's kind of vague and rubbery. You just turn it and eventually the car does what you tell it to. Not a big deal, you get used to it, but that's just the way it is. The handling in corners is kind of floaty, but with uh, four-wheel drive traction, you'll stick to the road. So don't worry about flying off. The car is essentially quiet on smooth streets. The body is well built. The brakes stop great, but the pedal is just a wee bit mushier than what I would like. But I'm picky about that. I don't think the average person will complain. And the V6 offers plenty of acceleration and passing power. Strong brakes again. Now the Honda computer system keeps track of your fuel consumption. According to this, the first 69 miles I've driven, I'm doing 18.7 miles per gallon which is what the EPA city rating is and I'm driving in heavy city traffic so that's pretty good then the second previous which was a journalist before me put on just over 200 miles an average 23.1 miles per gallon which is the EPA average but somehow the third journalist before me did 96.7 miles and got 30.6 miles per gallon they must have been driving down a mine shaft because I'm not getting anything near that I also might add that the screen also is connected to the side camera on the vehicle so when you turn on your right turn signal you get a clear view of what's to your right of course nice little feature to have on the freeway and when changing lanes in town just thought I'd show you that on the highway the Honda is basically a quiet car although there's a lot of rumbling coming from the tires but I'm going up a steep mountain grade here and the torque ability of the engine is working just fine to pull this vehicle uphill with no issues. There's more than adequate passing power. I've been climbing steep elevations for about the past 45 minutes at 75 miles per hour. And the computer shows I'm getting 26.7 miles per gallon, which is quite a feat for something that's basically a four-wheel drive SUV. Very impressive. Not too many cars could even do that on this road. The cross tour suspension is doing an excellent job absorbing the bumps on this nasty forest road and the four-wheel drive system is also doing an excellent job keeping us on the road in these tight corners I'm taking now this is a pretty rugged road we're on right now lots of big rocks a conventional car would never make it down here However, the cross tour has done quite well. Haven't bumped on a rock yet. Just a hundred yards more to go. This cross tour was loaded up with just about everything, so hit the $37,000 mark. For that, you do get the Honda quality and reliability. But if you can do without the four-wheel drive and live with the four-cylinder engine, you can get it a lot cheaper. But either way, it's an excellent vehicle for what it's intended for, and you won't be disappointed. By the way, if you ever come by Rock Springs, Arizona, you owe it to yourself to stop by and visit the Boot Hill Cemetery. Seymour Butts, born 1923, died 1989. Oh, nudist resort named We All Hang Out Together, located in Hooterville, Arizona. Uh, yeah, right. 
This one's a little more believable. Count Dracula, born 1431, died, not dead yet. Well, I guess I can believe that. I've worked with enough vampires in this business. 